Avoid all evil, cultivate good, and purify your own mind. These three principles form a gradual sequence of steps, starting with what is preparatory and external, and progressing to what is essential and internal. Each step naturally leads to the next, and the culmination of all three is the purification of the mind. So how to purify the mind, the key to liberation is mental purity, and correct understanding the work of purification must be carried out in the same place where impurities arise in the mind itself. The main method to purify the mind is meditation is not a search for effusive ecstasy or a home psychotherapy technique, but rather a carefully planned method of mental development. The main tool rules of meditation are the healthy factors of the mind, such as mindfulness, concentration, and understanding. Through the systematic practice of meditation, these tools are strengthened and connected to a system of self-purification which aims to uproot the roots and branches of all impurities so that not even their suess trace remains. Impurities are those dark and harmful mental forces that run beneath the surface of the flow of consciousness, poisoning our thoughts, values, attitudes, and actions. The three main impurities are the roots of evil, greed anger and delusion from which numerous branches and variants emerge, such as hatred, cruelty, avarice, envy, presumption, arrogance, hypocrisy, vanity, and the whole multiplicity of incorrect understandings among all the impurities of the mind. The deepest is ignorance. Therefore, the most important purification is achieved through the instrumentation of wisdom, knowledge and seeing things as they really are. Wisdom, however, does not arise by mere chance or occasional good intentions, but only through persevering practice. First, we have to create a space, developing a provisional purification of the mind. A purification that although temporary and vulnerable is indispensable as the foundation for liberating insight to arise, then in this space we must develop the skill of careful attention to eliminate impurities. We first need to know them and detect them in action. We must identify how impurities infiltrate and dominate our thoughts every day, and how they guide our lives' music fundamentally. The law of vibration is about the vibration that you're emitting at every moment. It comes from your thoughts, how you feel emotionally and how you physically feel taking care of ourselves is a full-time job that also involves protecting our energy. After all, protecting our energy is an investment in our mental health. Think, for example, of an hourglass. The sand slowly falls to the bottom as the seconds pass. Eventually, there is no more sand at the top, and you need to turn it over to recharge emotional well-being is similar. Each decision consumes a few grains of that sand during the day. We spend mental energy, whether making decisions, completing difficult tasks, or dealing with people who sometimes have toxic characteristics. Even though we think we can handle everything at once, we don't have infinite mental energy as it depletes. We lose physical vigor, our motivation waves, and we are more inclined to procrastinate. It is important to remember that life is a balance of I and Yang negative and positive light and darkness. There will always be a mix of these two elements. It's simply how things are, and we cannot change that. What really matters is being aware, noticing who, what, and where lifts us up, enlightens, and energizes us, and who, what, and where does the opposite. When we notice this, we can react appropriately and make conscious decisions that work for us through the spiritual energy system of our body. We are able to feel and into it everything and everyone. We come into contact with it is through this system that we can sense a tense atmosphere, perceive danger, and feel completely drained. It makes sense then to learn to protect ourselves and to keep our energy clean and charged in simpler terms. Intertwined with our physical body is an energy body made of vibrations so high that we usually cannot see it. The energy field that surrounds our body is called the aura and is composed of seven layers that pulse outward from our body. Our aura is interconnected with seven energy centers, known as the seven chakras within the body. 
which are linked to a vast network of energy channels called meridians and running through the inside of our body. If you are an empathetic person who often feels overwhelmed, it is essential not only to protect yourself, but also to strengthen your energy. There are several steps you can follow to effectively manage these energies. First of all, remember to prioritize your own needs. You are undoubtedly taking care of others around you, but even in the midst of all this, do not lose sight of your personal needs. We all have deep needs, whether it's a desire for rest, a desire to connect with something that resonates with our path, or the need to explore paths of spiritual practice. Perhaps there is a need to release repressed emotions, but we are not sure how to do it at the present moment. You may notice a heightened awareness of these needs. Perhaps in the hustle and bustle of life, you have ignored them. But something inside you may be awakening. This transformation requires recognizing and taking care of your needs. It is essential to understand that meeting your needs is not an act of selfishness. It is not about prioritizing yourself at the expense of others, but rather about replenishing the cup of your life by nurturing your needs and practicing self-love, you are effectively replenishing that cup, ensuring that you have something substantial to offer to the people around you. This is a deeply important concept that can easily escape our minds. Often we put others before ourselves and forget the importance of self-care. Therefore, remember, it is not selfishness. It is a vital step toward a fuller and enriched life. So take this reminder seriously and start taking care of yourself and your needs. The next essential point to understand during this phase is the power of awareness. What we expose ourselves to consistently can have a profound impact on our inner state, which in turn affects our energy. Have you noticed that when you constantly engage with disturbing or distressing content, you end up deepening in it? It's as if a subtle gravitational force is at work. For example, if you spend a lot of time on social media, absorbing the latest news and global events, you may find a subconscious attraction to these topics. Moreover, thanks to these algorithms, you will find more and more content aligned with your fears, frustrations, or anger over time. This can become counterproductive instead of enlightening. It starts to harm you deep down. You already have the knowledge you need. Yes, education and information are vital, but when information becomes toxic, it's time to step back. Thus, you can break the cycle of constantly filling your mind with fear and chaos. You have a greater purpose than being a mere consumer of information. In this phase, information overload is a real challenge, and trying to consume it all is impossible. If you allow yourself to become a past passive consumer, you will end up like a sponge soaked in a chaotic mix of everything without knowing what to do with all of it. What we really need is to connect with ourselves, discover our passions, and find out how we can make a positive impact on the people around us as well. It's about recognizing what distracts us from this path and learning to eliminate these distractions. This is crucial because these distractions drain our precious energy. It's not just the information itself, but also the negative and toxic baggage that often accompanies it when we continuously expose ourselves to negative emotions. It's like stirring a cauldron within us. This emotional turmoil can persist, casting shadows over our days, making it difficult to regain balance. It is very important to be aware of this. Think of your mind as a garden. Negative emotions are like poison to this garden, and I sincerely believe that you would not like to pour poison on music it a good practice for. Recharging our energy is to have a good night's sleep. This is very important, as many studies have shown the profound impact of a good night's sleep. Breaking old habits such as browsing the phone until late at night can be challenging. However, nurturing sleep is a commitment to our well-being, our energy levels increase, and thus we cultivate a greater awareness of what really matters in our lives. Nature. The very essence of our existence has an incredible rejuvenating power. Sunlight. For example, contains a profound energy that can revitalize us. So try to take a moment to go out during sunrise or sunset. You will feel a tangible shift in your energy, as if reconnecting with the original source of all life. This is the power of nature. It reminds us that we are part of something bigger, 
a universal cycle that transcends our every day. Existence by connecting with nature, we reconnect with that source, re-energizing our physical bodies and our souls. It is important to create and maintain healthy boundaries. This means learning to say no and establishing limits with other people and activities that drain our energy by protecting our time and energy. We ensure that we are investing in activities and relationships that are truly enriching and uplifting. Taking care of our energy is an act of self-love and wisdom. Be mindful of how we interact with the world around us and how it affects our energy. You are the guardian of your own energy. Take care of it with love and it will sustain you. Taking care of personal energy also involves cultivating healthy relationships. The people we interact with regularly have a significant impact on our energy. It is important to surround ourselves with people who share similar values, who support and uplift us, rather than draining our energy with negativity or drama talk. Toxic or overly demanding relationships can be a major obstacle to maintaining healthy energy. Learn to listen to and trust your intuition is a powerful internal tool that helps us make decisions aligned with our deepest values and true self-learning to trust. This inner guide can help us avoid situations and relationships that are harmful to our energy. Be strong and enter your own interior. There you will have a solid place to stand. Think well about this and do not go elsewhere. Just throw away all thoughts of imaginary things and remain firm in what you are. Be still in your mind, quiet, your senses and your body as well when all are still. Do nothing in that state. The truth will reveal itself to you when the attachment to I and mine goes away. The work of the Lord happens. The flowers bloom, bear fruit and wither. So that others may sprout, do not seek outside external forces. Hide the deep meaning of existence from your eyes. True faith resides in the heart, only in the heart. Can you experience the divine presence of truth? Listen to your own being. If you listen to this inner voice, you will find the truth. The ego is the sour S-C-E of all thought. It created the body and the world and makes you think you are a man of the world if its objects had an independent existence, that is, if they existed somewhere separate from you, then it would be possible to distance yourself from them, but they do not exist. Separate from you. They owe their existence to you and your thoughts. The cause of your misery is not in your life. The cause of your misery is within you as ego and in the false perceptions of personality and division. You impose limitations on yourself and then struggle in vain to transcend them. The mind is the only obstacle. Why should your duties and occupations in life hinder your spiritual effort? It is possible to perform all the activities of life with detachment and see only the self as real. It is wrong to think that, if you remain fixed internally on the real self, the obligations of life will not be well performed. It is like an actor on stage dressed as the character he acts as such and even feels that he is part of the play. But in reality, he knows that in real life he is not the character but another person in the same way. Why should the awareness of the body disturb you once you know that in truth you are not the body? but the real. Self-nothing that the body does should divert you from remaining as the real self remaining fixed on the real self will not interfere with the proper and effective performance of any duties the body has, just as the fact that the actor knows his true identity does not interfere with the character he plays on stage. Renunciation is always in the mind. It is not necessary to go to the forest or solitary places or give up our obligations. The important thing is that the mind does not turn outward, but inward. If your passions were something external to us, we could fight with them and conquer them, but they all come from within us. When we look internally at the source from where they come, we prevent them from arising and conquer them. It is not the world and its objects that make our passions arise, but the world and its objects are only created by our mind, they do not exist. When we are in deep sleep, the only freedom you have is to turn inward and renounce activities there. Abandoning activities means giving up attachments to activities or their fruits. If we remain fixed on the real self, activities will continue to happen in the same way, and their success 
will not be compromised. We should not have the idea that we are the agents, still, activities will continue, and that force whatever its name that brought the body into existence will take care of ensuring that the activities the body is destined to perform are carried out. The fact is that any amount of actions can be performed and very well performed by an enlightened person without identification with them, or the impression that it is he who does them. A power acts through his body and uses it to do the work. Because you identify with the body, you think the work is done by you. But the body in it, activities including the work, do not exist outside the self-disguise, the false identity. And remember who you are. Thus the work will not disturb you. It will follow automatically. Intuition works when the thinker has no thoughts. Guided by intuition, those who have made great discoveries did so. Not when anxiously thinking about them, but in silence through intuition. Surrendering is bandaging yourself to the source of your being and not deluding yourself into thinking that this source is some god outside you. The source is within surrender to it. This means that you must seek this source and dive into it. Grace is within you. Grace is yourself. Grace is not something to be acquired from others. Anything. External is useless. All you need to know is that your existence is within you are never outside your own operation. If you understand the real self, you will see that it is everything everywhere, and at all times, nothing exists beyond the real music self. For all eternity we have acted based on the impulses of greed, anger, and delusion, and therefore the work of purification cannot be rushed in obedience to our demand. For immediate results, the task requires patience, care, and persistence for each impurity. There is an antidote, the method to escape it and overcome it by learning these principles and applying them appropriately. We can gradually make the internal impurities disappear, even the most persistent ones, and thus we can achieve the end of suffering. The immaculate liberation of the mind, wisdom arises from. Meditation without meditation. Wisdom diminishes knowing these two paths of progress and decline. Let a man behave in such a way that his wisdom may increase. Consider also the feeding habits of sheep and goats. Sheep are content to eat only the grass for which their stomachs are perfectly prepared, but goats eat anything they find and do not respect their constitution. The same happens with those who do not. Take care of the food of their minds, for they have no fixed goal or clear purpose. Like goats, they do not realize when mental food is harmful or leads us down wrong paths in their daily lives. This drags them into a harmful myth or a dangerous deception. They wander aimlessly. Gathering the mental equivalent of thorns, bits of cloth, leaves, thistles, and weeds, because they lack good sense.